If you're in the mood for quality thrills and chills, look no further. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the Top 10 Horror Miniseries. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we are taking a look at some of the best miniseries to ever be produced that fit into the broader genre of horror. Whether they're gore fests, supernatural or psychological thrillers, or dark urban fantasies, they are eligible. And now I'm going to show you who the boss is around here. Number 10, The Stand. No! No! Oh, it's too late to say no, dear. <laughs> Much too late. Spoiler, The Stand isn't going to be the last Stephen King adaptation on our list today. But come on, we all knew there'd be a few. As if this post-apocalyptic world isn't horrible enough, our survivors also have to deal with infamous sorcerer and demon figure, Randall Flagg, whom you may or may not know as another character from the Dark Tower series. You poor guy. You look like Kaka. Uh, Stephen King Cinematic Universe? Uh, yes, please. After the apocalypse wipes out most of the world, survivors must choose to serve evil Randall Flagg or follow the angelic Mother Abigail. And through it all, The Stand expertly weaves fantasy, drama, and horror together to wonderful effect. <laughs> Number 9. The Kingdom <laughs> Is there any better setting for a horror series than a dark and twisted hospital? Tough to say. But there are few filmmakers who can get under an audience's skin quite like Lars von Trier, and he uses his hospital as a canvas for some seriously devilish television. <laughs> the Kingdom, titled Rieu in Denmark, is a Danish miniseries that follows an ensemble of characters as they deal with strange and surreal occurrences, both human and supernatural. Intelligently written, oddly humorous, and undeniably stylish, it begs to be rewatched. Though a third series had been outlined, the death of two of the leads has effectively ended such plans, leaving horror fans to wonder what could have been. Om jag nu ser tillbaka på mitt liv, alltså utan fördomar, finns det en enda punkt där jag kan säga att där gjorde jag fel. Number eight, The Langoliers. Okay, we gotta be honest here, the flying meatball-like monsters do look a bit silly by today's standards, and maybe even by television standards in 1995. <laughs> Still, if you were a kid when this series came out, you probably thought it was the most terrifying thing on TV. They tear into those lazy little boys with their dry, hungry, chomping teeth. No, Daddy, don't let them get me! While it may have less than stellar special effects and a seriously out there plot, it still has that magic that Stephen King adaptations are famous for, with unique and fleshed out quirky characters, and a mystery you can't help but stick with until the end. Get out of here! Number 7, Jekyll. Lovely to see you again. Hi, the kids. While some may argue that this is more drama than horror, there's no denying that Jekyll incorporates themes common in a lot of other horror shows and movies. It acts as a sort of sequel to Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, tying the novella into the show as it goes on. While James Nesbitt is convincing as Dr. Tom Jackman, he is utterly magnetic as the charismatic and cheeky Mr. Hyde when his dark side lets loose. Do it run, not when you're playing lions. You know what runs? Food runs. The way Hyde messes with others, and the way he kills those who do him wrong, make for some great moments. And viewers are left wondering which persona will triumph in the end. Look at you. The most powerful creature on the planet, that's what I'm looking at. Number six, The Fades. Can you? With some impressive special effects and frightening creature designs, The Fades expertly intertwines horror, sci-fi, and urban fantasy into one, creating a compelling teen-focused drama with some pretty heavy stakes. As in, the world will end if our main characters don't succeed sort of stakes. We're gonna die here, might as well tell you why I think we make a great couple. And frankly, it'd be easier to just die. Paul is your typical geeky teenager who just so happens to see spirits of the dead, aptly named Fades. No big deal, right? 
That is, until they start trying to take over the living. With only six episodes, The Fades is definitely a series that'll have you binging the whole thing in one viewing. Number 5. Harper's Island Harper's Island is the type of show that'll have you hooked from the very first episode. Everyone loves mysteries, and murder mysteries are the best type. One by one, guests invited to Harper's Island for a wedding are gruesomely killed off, and we're left to deduce who the killer may be. Henry? Who is that? It's got your traditional revenge slasher film tropes, and they extend surprisingly well to a miniseries. This allows for comfortable pacing and enough breathing room in between all the murders, with a few comedic moments thrown in there, too. I wake up every day praying she doesn't meet a cool British person. Or any other British person. Number 4. Stephen King's The Shining You're dead! And I don't have to listen! So shut up! While it may not be as well known as the 1980 Stanley Kubrick movie of the same name, it's still definitely capable of creating a slowly creeping sense of unease and dread. And if you ask the author Stephen King, this is the adaptation he wanted to see made. Baby, come on, come back! Good shot. Great party, isn't it? As Jack Torrance's sanity begins to deteriorate, we see the effect it has on his family, and viewers can't help but get more and more nervous, even if they're already familiar with how the story plays out. Great camera techniques and pacing build an ever-increasing sense of discomfort and tension, as this version more closely tells King's story of The Haunted Hotel. Hello, Danny. I've been waiting for you. Number 3. The Enfield Haunting most people are familiar with The Conjuring and its sequel, right? While James Wan undeniably did the Enfield poltergeist justice, this series actually did it first. And you'd be wrong to dismiss it as a lesser version of The Conjuring 2. The Enfield haunting's effective use of tension and suspense keeps viewers on edge, while the strong cast, which includes BAFTA-nominated actors Timothy Spall and Juliette Stevenson, succeed in drawing the viewers into the horrifying experience with their convincing performances. I'm sorry. Don't be. For anyone interested in a good ghost story, or rather a poltergeist story, this is a must watch. You may need to sleep with the lights on for a few nights though. Did you die in this house? Did you die in this house? Where? Number 2. American Horror Story. Here, piggy, pig. <laughs> Whatever you fear, American Horror Story is sure to address it. Be it clowns, aliens, ghosts, witches, or anything in between, this show's got it horrifyingly covered. In addition to exploring all manner of horror staples, American Horror Story adds style and twists and turns the likes of which you've never seen before, ensuring that every subject it portrays, it does so with panache and originality, all while managing to terrify. <laughs> Though it's a long-running series, each season is a new story that functions as a miniseries of its own. This keeps the show fresh and always entertaining, while the gap between seasons allows everyone time to guess at what horror we'll be facing next. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Not bad. Pretty much surrounded here. How does it go? <laughs> Number one, it. I, Georgie, am Pennywise the dancing clown. You are Georgie. So now we know each other. These days, clowns are among the scariest sights around, thanks to early 21st century pranks involving clown costumes. And of course, it which has made the transition to the big screen. First, though, came the miniseries adaptation, which, based on Stephen King's book of over a thousand pages, was bound to be an ambitious one. <laughs> I'll kill you all! Pennywise scares the life out of us, and the kids in the Losers Club are phenomenally cast, giving the series a grounded, down-to-earth feel while simultaneously delving into cosmic horror. Since the 2017 adaptation is only giving us half the story, it seems that we'll be seeing a lot more of Pennywise the Clown. 
You'll float too. You'll float too. You'll float too. You'll float too. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.